All right, folks, thank you for tuning in and welcome for coming back here again. I've been telling you all I was going to do another video, uh, or a, a video, about the Old Faithful drum dial. This is it. Among other things this video is going to have in it, the video is mainly focused on this, but I got some other crazy shit to tell you about. Uh, the craziness here, as if it ain't been bad enough, the craziness in this life and this family goes on. So there's a little bit more about it in this video. The patrons already know about all of it. Uh, I can't remember how much I recorded about it, but I'll include it in this video toward the end of it. Anyway, it's the drum dial. There's big channels out there with millions of subscribers. Got this thing wrong and are telling you the wrong information, man. Uh, yeah, I'll show you here what you get. Thank you to the guy that sent me this. You know who you are. It comes packed really nice. I don't know if I can tell you his name or not, so I'm not going to. I, I think he, I think he asked me not to tell him. Now, some of these that you buy, I'm holding up here to show you what it looks like. Hopefully, the camera's focusing on that. Some of these that you buy, you got well, all of them. You got to calibrate. Some of them comes with a little square piece of glass and that glass is flat so you can set the drum dial it's got a little arm up on the bottom here see that so you set that down it's got little screws here that you calibrate it with maybe one on the back no just these two right here right on the top of it uh, but you can calibrate on any table like a uh, oh what a uh, table saw you could use that table it's flat you could use a uh, a level just a level set it down on a, a level that's flat but uh, this one didn't come with a piece of glass they a lot of the newer ones do now this is a brand new and so I don't know why there wasn't any glass in it anyways just okay I appreciate the guy sending it to me and I'm very thankful to you for it thank you man a lot of these big channels with hundreds of thousands of subscribers even millions I've seen them man they'll tell you you know you go around a banjo head or a drum head and measure how tight or loose it is say if it's 90 they say I tune my head to 90 pounds or 90 square foot pounds I've heard him say that before all kinds of wrong shit man now I told this on a Patreon video I got several buddies that play this drums, very good, very good drummers. So I called one of them up and asked him if he ever used one of these. He laughed. He said, yeah, I used them for years, almost every day. And he explained to me, I'm going to explain to you, he explained to me how it worked and what it actually measures and how it measures it and what, you, what the information you can gather from that measurement, okay? So I thanked him, we got ready to hang up, and he said, now here's a, here's the number to so-and-so drummer. He can tell you everything you want to know about it. And this drummer that he gave me the number to, you probably, I told the patrons, you probably got records and CDs in your collection of this guy playing drums on them with someone. And he played in some big bands too. Anyways, I called the guy up told him who I was. He had heard of my YouTube channel, actually. And uh, he told me almost exactly the same thing that my friend had told me. Okay? Almost identical information that my friend told me. I thanked him, told him it was nice to finally get to meet him, kind of meet him over the phone. Uh, he gave me yet another contact, drummer. And I called this third person up. I didn't know him. But he was a nice guy. And we got talking about it and explaining it. And I was telling him about how these big YouTube channels measures it in foot square pounds and pounds and uh, micrometers and just all kinds of shit. Some of them's way out there, man. And they swear up and down, that's what this measures. And you can't tell them or argue with them because they have so many subscribers and followers. Kind of like Trump's brainwashed people 
But I'm going to tell you exactly what these three people told me. They use one of these nearly every day for years and years and years. I'm going to tell you, explain it to you just like they explained it to me. So hold on, we'll move in. Uh, I'll get a banjo and uh, move in the other room here and I'll tell you all about it. Hold on. Okay, folks. Real simple and quickly. I'm going to tell you how this drum dial works. Now, I've seen big channels on YouTube say that this is pounds. You're measuring pounds. 88 pounds, it says. This head's kind of loose on this banjo. 88 pounds. I don't know if you can see it or not. 87 pounds. It's not pounds. I've heard it. Uh, uh, all kinds of shit, man. Per square foot, per square inch, pounds per square inch. It's not pounds at all. It's thousands of an inch is what this thing measures. You got a tiny little hand right there that tells you how many times this goes around. You know, when this goes around one time, that little hand will move to one. Okay? Now, the way it works, like I said, this head's loose on this banjo. Right there, it's reading 88. And this is an arch top banjo, so I can't measure it clear out here. Well, I guess I could. But to get an ac ac accurate reading, because it's an arch top, i got to set this inward a little bit. So there's 88. There's 87. Uh, 88 again. 89. 88 and 80. Two purposes. One is to get your hoop evenly, evenly tightened all the way around. You got all these brackets, same on a drum. And it's to get them, they should measure evenly all the way around. I'm betting you this head might be busted by it being so loose right there. That's That says, oh, that's 90. I thought it said 80. Okay, it's tighter there. 90. Let's just use that. Ninety thousandths, okay? Like I said, this head's kind of loose. Ninety thousandths means, basically, this head will move ten thousandths. If that read eighty thousandths, that means the head can move twenty thousandths. If it read seventy thousandths, that means the head, that's getting really loose, can move seventy thousandths inches of, of movement right there. I don't know if you can see that little bit of movement or not. I can see it here where I am. So you can tell the head's very loose on this. When you get up around 93 or 94 or 5, that head is getting up to around a, a B or a B flat or A sharp note. And you can check that by muting the strings. It's actually an A. And your fourth string, you know, to match the note the head is. That's an A, but there again, like I said, that's not tight for an arch top banjo. But my point is, use this to get it even all the way around. You should read this the very same thing. This head does not. See, that's 88 there. 88, 88, it's pretty close, there's 89, 88, and about 88 there, so it's pretty close to being even, so that, what does that mean, that means 12 thousandths of movement, now you know there's a, there's a point where uh, in electronics, what do we used to call it? I forget, but different size heads and different thicknesses of heads and different uh, amounts of frosting applied to the head or heads without frosting at all. There's a tolerance. That's what I'm trying to think of. There's a little tolerance level there. We used to use that terminology in electronics. And that's all I can think of to tell you. There's a little tolerance there depending on the thickness of the head the size of the head, this is 11 inch from 
uh, in diameter. So the size of the head, the thickness of the head, how much frosting, whether it even has frosting or not, all that stuff's going to, you know, you're going to have a little tolerance level there. It may not be exactly, but it's pretty close within one thousandths of an inch. So if this read 80, that means this head can move twenty thousandths, and that's about all it moves. Of course, it's reading 88 mostly. But that's how that works. All these channels telling you it's pounds per square inch. It's not pounds at all. <laughs> it is not pounds at all. When you get these, sometimes, they, some of them you get comes with a piece of glass. Okay? Just a little square piece of glass. You set this down on that glass and calibrate it. This one didn't come with that. Uh, thank you to the guy that sent me this. You know who you are. I don't know if I can say your name. Maybe it had glass in it and he kept it. I don't know. I don't really care because I can, I can level it, you know, on, on a saw table, which is flat. Or even just a, uh, a level like this. And take a level just like this, a regular old level, and calibrate it. You know, it's not calibrated. But anyways, you get my point, man. you got to calibrate it first. This one's not calibrated. I thought I calibrated it, but... It's been a day or two, so it may have slipped out. Whatever this reads on your head, banjo or drums, to, to keep it simple, if you are as tight as 90,000 to reading on this, and it's calibrated, that means that head will move 10 thousandths of an inch. That's all it means. So there you go. That's a drum dial explained. I had... Uh, well, I had, had four gentlemen now to take the time to explain. All four of them told me the very exact same thing. Three of them were drummers, and one was a banjo player. And all four guys told me this exact same thing. So, you know, take it for what it's worth. I believe them, and I think they're right. And I hope it helps you. Hold on. Okay, now here is another portion of the video separate from all that. I hope that helps you, by the way. Uh... I've been telling you guys, I've mentioned several of my videos about women wanting to move in here with me, okay? Two of them's married. Two is not married. And now I've got a third one that's not married. And another one being here after that. But anyway, she's not married either. The patrons already know all about this. I got up here on July the 11th. Patrons already know this, but I, I'm going to tell you to some of it. <laughs> I got up on July the 11th, 2024, just like I always do, got up, put on a pot of coffee, started mingling around, went to the bathroom, just piddling around, waking up, pulling the blinds open, always close them at night. We always did that because there's so many people around here. But I got up that uh, Thursday morning, I think it was, on July 11th, I think it was a Thursday, and came right in here, I got my cup of coffee, come in here and sat down. I always, uh, not always, but a lot of, most mornings, get on uh, YouTube or Google and, you know, watch the news and the weather and catch up on everything that's going on in the world, you know. Almost every day, not every day, but I did that day. So I turn on the computer and sip my coffee, sit down here, light a cigarette, pull this blind right behind me open, just pulled it up. And I can see the front porch from this blind right here. Now, just as soon as I pulled it up, the first thing, I don't know why, I looked over there at the front porch. I saw blonde hair. And I thought, what the hell? Uh, I figured it might have been from a party across the road or up the street and someone lost their way or whatever. I, I was kind of pissed off about it. Wake up and find some chick camped out on my front porch. So I immediately stomp out there jerk the door open I guess I made a lot of noise and the noise I, I made woke her up she raised up and when she looked at me I realized I know her I hadn't seen her for like 12 years or 10 years or maybe 15 even she was one of my she was one of my daughter's friends she was one of my daughter's friends years ago so she'd been here before years and years ago Anyways, she was strung out big time, man, and said, I said, what the hell? 
What are you doing on my front porch, man? I haven't seen you for a decade or more. She said, I just got to go to the bathroom, got to go to the bathroom. I, I wasn't going to let her in the house, man. I don't know where she's been or what she did. And I said, okay, but I want to know what, what this is all about. So I let her in. She goes to the bathroom. Then there about 10 minutes. Seemed like a long time. Came back down the hallway, came around the corner. I had gone to the living room, took my coffee and went in there after I let her in. And she came around the corner and was na butt naked, man, carrying her clothes in her hands. And I said, what the hell, woman? She said, I, I got to lay down. She said, I've got to lay down. She was out of her mind, man. She wasn't just tired. She was tired and wore out, too, I could tell. Probably hadn't ate in days. And I felt sorry for her. I said, well, lay down. There's a blanket right there. Pull that down on you and just rest. But I said, you can't stay here. You're not going to stay here. And that just went through her, man, like a bullet. <laughs> So she lays down there. I let her lay there probably four hours, maybe five hours. It was getting up into the evening. And I'm thinking, you know, I gotta get rid of this woman, man. I don't want her staying here with me. Couldn't get her awake. She'd wake up, talk a little bit, and her head would just fall. And when she did talk, I couldn't even understand what she was saying. Barely now and then pick something up. So I got tired of that pretty fast. I dialed 911, told them, I said, hey, I got a person here, refuses to leave. I can't even keep her conscious long enough to talk to her about leaving. So, just in a few minutes, officers came down, and they got her awake, got her out here, took her out. And, uh, you know, that, that just messes your whole day up when you wake up to something like that, man. Well, the next day, same thing, I get up, I pour myself coffee, start opening the blinds, go in there, set my coffee down, pull this blind up, look out and see blonde hair out there again. Man, they hadn't even been 24 hours yet. So I go stomping out there again, there, the same chick, man. I told you guys about women wanting in there, but I didn't even go out there that time. I thought, man, this shit got to stop, you know? All the others, I told them no, and they at least backed off a little bit. So I just picked my phone up, dialed 911 again, told them who I was, where I was. I'd called yesterday, had a person removed. I said, we're right back in the same boat. She's here again, beating on my windows and walls and doors, you know, and smoking something out there. I said, you know, I... I don't know why she might burn the place down. She did burn her mother's place down and admitted to it. I don't know what led up to that and caused it, but an hour went by. No officer showed up. I called 911 again. I said, man, you know, she burned her mom's house down. For all I know, she could be out here planning to burn mine down because I had her sent to jail. And I didn't know more than hardly hang up. Police car pulled in. Took her down, cuffed her, took her down the car, read the rights. Then he came back up on the porch and was doing something. I went out there and there was uh, these little strips of uh, subutex, I think it's called. There was, a, there was a sandwich baggie full of them. And he had three in his hand that had been open. And there was one on the floor. I said, there's another one right there. So she must have did four of those out there and smoked something. He gathered all that stuff up and took it. Well, tomorrow will make three weeks. This the second time he took her. She's still in jail. Uh, today is the last day of July. It's July 31st, 2024. And she's still in jail. They have to have a pre-trial and maybe several of them before they can have the main trial. So, you know, I didn't, I told the cop, I said, wow, I didn't know all this shit was out here piled up in my driveway. She had cigarette butts all over the porch floor where she'd smoke and just put it out on the floor and leave the butt lay there. Uh, candy and cakes, big tall glasses of soda, just all kind of crap. I had to pick it up the first day after he took her away. I had to pick it all up the second day and I put latex gloves on like I said, I don't know where she's been, what she's been doing. And I was very careful picking the stuff up and putting it in her boxes. 
There's stacks of boxes in my driveway, man. Still yet, three weeks later, there's a big screen, flat screen TV out there. I did leave it on the porch so it would be out of the rain and weather, but it's probably blown in there and got it. I don't know how many mornings I went out there and the lids would be off of those big plastic bins. I'll show them to you if I haven't showed you already in this video. And uh, I don't know, three or four times the lids were off and I put the lids back on. I never went through this shit or anything. But I, the wind didn't blow them off because the wind blew like hell here several days and I watched them close. No lids came off. Someone took those lids off. They seen that shit piled up out there. Took the lids off. God only knows what they took out of there or found in there. <clears throat> So that's been going on here at the house. I figured I would share that with you. I've been up front with you guys about everything. You know, I lost my mom. I lost my daughter. I lost my wife. It's been a year and a half since she's left now. So, you know, I've been honest with you guys about everything that's going on here. And then I'm going to go ahead and share this with you, too, about this chick. I haven't heard anything else or seen her, but I know, man, when she, when she, she gets out of jail, she's going to come right straight back here again because all of her shit's out in the driveway. She said, you're going to come back to get her shit. And I told that cop, I said, that's okay. But if she camps out on my front porch again, who's up here beating on the windows and checks every door in the house to see if it's locked, I said, I'll be calling you again, dude. We'll call you again. He said, well, we'll deal with that if it happens, when it happens. <laughs> but that's what's been going on here at the house. It never sleeps. Like I say, the patrons knew all about it long time ago and there's more to it and there was another chick here after that she had a car she drove up here and I didn't even go to the door I thought fuck these women man you know I don't want a relationship right now you know what I mean I wish my wife would screw her damn head on and come home so I wish but it don't look like that's happening not in the last year and a half it's not but anyways, uh, I was telling you the truth about the women. Like I say, two of them's married, one of them's rich. Said she'd give up everything and even take care of me. I could give up everything. Wouldn't have to work. I said, I don't like to work. I don't want to quit working. <laughs> anyways, I hope the drum dial stuff helps you guys. And uh, if there's anything else I was going to put in this video, I'll put it right here. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you. Next time, I love you all from the heart. Thank you for keeping it here through all the shit. I love you. See you next time. I told the patrons about women trying to get in here and about waking up and one passed out on my front porch in the swing. And this woman came to stay, as you can see. I've had to put the lids back on those blue bins several times. And I'm sure somebody's been into this shit. It's tomorrow makes three weeks. Today's July 31st, 2024. Tomorrow makes three weeks. And right there on that on that bench is a big flat screen TV she brought. Magistrate's office said I have to take reasonable care of this. I said I am not touching that. I don't know where she's been, what she's did. I wore latex gloves just to put the lids back on every time I saw them off. The patrons know all about this. <laughs> yeah, I might have mentioned on YouTube about women trying to get in here with me, want to move in, want to move in. Well, this one came with the intent of staying. She's in jail now, still. <laughs>